My name is Tom Mullinay from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today we're here at First Friday to spread the message of freedom. And this is... Hi, my name is Ryan. Tyler. Sarah. And uh, yeah, we're here to enjoy some arts, uh, talk to uh, members of our community, and uh, see if we can plant some of the seeds of uh, anarchism, the seeds of uh, free market ideas. And with that, hopefully you enjoy this video, this content for today. Take good care. See you guys at the victory party. Yeah. You have no, no freedom of economic choice. You still have to give me your money. You still have to give up your property. You still have to pay your taxes. Right? On top of taxes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because if you did have a freedom of economic choice, how best to allocate your own resources, government wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage if you didn't pay your taxes. Right? So that's the hidden violence behind this matrix, behind yeah. government, that this organization only knows how to solve problems through one way, exactly. a singular way, and that's through that threat of and use of violence to solve any problems, versus a plurality, though, of nonviolent solutions that you and I and my friends here already share. So what are your thoughts on that? Go to Canada. Go to Canada? Yeah. Well, well, well Canada also has a government, so it's another yeah, cage you run away to, right? At some point, you have to look at the cage and, and see well, for what it is and call it out for what it is, right? Stand up against it. What do you do? Uh, so what do you do? Yeah. You unite. Unite your community for, for these principles. Unite against government. Unite against the idea that you need strangers to tell you how to live your life. Did you hear about like the 99% movement that was going on? Oh, what about it? Like that got shut down. You don't hear about that. Anymore. Well, that, yeah, it got <laughs> shut down because uh, this is a movement that doesn't that take take place anywhere you are, right? Their their movement was was at a park where you need camping gear. Or you're at a fixed place. Government loves that because they know where you are. It's like very easy to shut it down. They can't stop us from simply talking to each other, yeah. right? They can't stop us from that's the last frontier where they it's hard for them to restrict their freedom, right? They can't stop us talking at a coffee shop on the sidewalk in our own homes. That's where their conversation has to continue. Like for now, right? For now, for now, yeah, yeah. Until we, we have enough people to to see uh, the truth, and then we can take like, a stand against. You heard that. the paradigm shift? How people are starting to see? Yeah, yeah. It only takes ten percent to change a whole community. You don't need to change everyone, right? For the most part, most people are just com complacent with these ideas, and it's, it's a lot of the radicals, a lot of these new ideas that emerge so that helps push these uh, the momentum. For, for this paradigm shift. Um, and I don't think it should take that long as long as we have these conversations. You know, it's, it starts uh, within our own personal personal relationships, right? With our friends and our families, encourage them to do the same. Um, and now, you know, my mother, my, my friends, we're all kind of on board, so now for me, I'm reaching out to my community. Um, that's, you heard of chemtrails, I'm sure. Yeah, chemtrails, yeah. <laughs> They're like right above you, but yet no one even sees them. Did you ever see them? No. No, right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's not even like a, there's too much proof now. Like it's <laughs> it's right in front of you. <laughs> all right, I'm not from around here. Though. No, no, where are you from? Um, Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg. Yeah. Okay, all right. Pretty, pretty much around here. That's like a mega, mega metropolis area, yeah. right? Less than 45 minutes away. Um, yeah, well, if you're ever in town in Richmond, uh, check us out. We got, uh, can I give you some pamphlets? Sure. Yeah, right yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here you go, man. Uh, can you pass me an uh, anarchy one? Josh? Uh, yeah, the conspiracy club at VCU. He also wants to know. Yeah? All right, cool. All right. So if you check the events calendar. I don't know if I'd be able to make it back out here, though. It's Where Check out the Facebook, the Facebook page. We can like chat about stuff. Um, I don't have Facebook either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, our part, that part, that's off of the internet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nice, nice. Well, I got cool. a lot more done now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for stopping by, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you. Appreciate it. Take care, man. Happy First Fridays. So that's the hidden violence behind government. This organization only knows how to solve problems through a singular way, through one way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems. Versus, though, the plurality of nonviolent solutions that us three, four, five, six, seven, uh, or my friends here already are we, uh, using a lot to solve. Right? So, what are your thoughts on that? I honestly completely agree. Yeah? Um, so, if I wanted to sell raw milk, Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm, glad, I'm glad you stopped this. Oh, no, thank you, thank you. Um, and then, and that's, so we're, we're part of a non-political organization called Liberty Army. We're trying to remove the politics, the things that divide us and separate us. You're a Democrat, you're a Republican, you know? Um, that the politics is what divides us instead of uniting us as a community to look for the, yeah, there are problems, but violence is not a viable option to solve those, those problems, right? Stealing from people is not, it's not a solution, right? We'll kickstart a Kickstarter campaign fund, um, and the, uh, the government monopoly 
monopoly on, on roads on, like for example, post office, USPS, that's a monopoly on delivering pieces of paper. No one else has the freedom to compete against delivering pieces of paper. If you try to compete or start your own business, you get fined or get thrown into a cage. Right? So a lot of different areas. I want, I want cops, I want uh, law, I want judges, I want security, I want roads, I want all these things. But these are the areas government has monopolized. Yeah. Right? You have no freedom of choice to cancel on subscribers you would any other service. Right? Like Netflix started to raise their prices overnight the other year. People like cancel, fuck that, can't go to Hulu, right? Yeah. But you have no freedom of choice when government says, well, you still have to pay for it and you still have to accept it whether you want it or not. Yeah. Right? And that's that's what what's wrong with it. They have a violent monopoly on the services. Um, would you guys like some pamphlets? Sure. Yeah? Alright, cool. Well, thank you for stopping by. I guess uh usually try to go uh there's another one. So the uh yeah. So this principle, though, this uh, standing that we already share against uh, against the initiation of force, against the initiation of violence into other people, that's called the non-aggression principle. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, so if it's wrong for you and I to initiate violence, it should also be wrong for anyone else to yeah. initiate it, right? No matter what your title is or what color costume you're wearing, right? Yeah. Uh, all over the world. Uh, but that's the same very same principle that government violates every day because uh, they have a title or they have a costume, right? They supersede morality, um, right? Um, so yeah, thank you, thank you again for stopping by. My name is Cal. I'm Marla. Marla? Mm -hmm. Pleasure. Mujan. Mujan. Pleasure. Mujan. You'll find us at the uh, student commons pretty much every Monday. I want to be able to say it right. Yeah, yeah. If you have like, more questions or anything like that, uh, feel right. free to stop by. Thank you. You too. Take good care. So that's the hidden violence, the immorality of government. And yeah. that this organization only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus though the plurality of non-violent solutions that so you and I are going to share. What are your thoughts on that? I think our current <laughs> no, I'm just sort of trying to, to take it all in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you could just move somewhere else. Move somewhere else? Okay, you can move somewhere else, but move to another government? Uruguay. Or, or great, those governments there. My friends and family are here, right? Yeah. It should be those who aggress against their property who should move, right? Those who violate your property rights who should move, right? Civilization belongs to the civilized, right? I mean, to... But you can say that, but it's not true. It's not true, right? It's not the truth, yeah. And that's where we have to kind of unite as a community, like go with the politics that divides us. You're a Democrat, you're a Republican, you're a Libertarian. Let go of the, the political battles that we have and uh, unite as a community with these values that we have towards nonviolence, towards equality, towards freedom, right? So it's the idea that you don't need strangers, politicians, deciding how best your life should be lived. So now, I'm, the services the government provides, I want them. But they have monopolized those services. The government has a monopoly on law. They have a monopoly on judges, on courts, on roads. Well, it does when you have a police state. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Have a, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Police state, that, that's what's going to happen. Well, you know? yeah, you already do have one. Yeah. No, uh, I, I didn't really want to be on the. You know. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. I don't true. really want to express my opinion in it's very, public. It's right, right. Tell you the truth. Okay. Uh, yeah, but that's very. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I understand. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. Okay. I totally. Disagree. All right. Uh, but so the government has a monopoly on the police on providing security. You don't have the freedom to cancel or unsubscribe as you would any other service like AT&T or Netflix. You don't have the freedom to compete against these monopolized services against security to say, you know what, I can provide you a better form of security that's not going to be harmful or abusive to you, the consumer. No, somebody can pull up in a police car in front of my house tomorrow. It's not really a police car. Right, yeah. Take me away, I'm gone. Right. Yeah. And I understand that. So, in the twilight of my life, I just hope to make it through the next day. And that's about it. <laughs> But I see for young people, if I were they, I think the way you breathe. Thank you. All right. Nice Thank to meet you. You as well. Happy First Fridays. Good luck to you. Thank you. And then those laws of opinions are then backed and enforced by the police at gunpoint. Right? You could take uh, government opinion that cannabis is bad for everyone. Right? So if I were to smoke a plant, I'd be kidnapped, arrested, thrown into a cage, a prison, and which any point of refuse or resist because I don't agree with that opinion and try to escape, I'd remember more violence or something shot, murder. Right? And at the same time, government has even found it to more violence because no point can you say, I do want to help the poor, but I don't want to fund war. Right? You have no freedom of economic. You still have to give me your money. You still have to give up your property. You still have to pay your taxes. Because if you did have a freedom of economic choice of what to do with your own money, 
government wouldn't threaten this any turn. No, the cage. If you didn't pay your taxes, right? So that's the hidden violence behind this organization, behind the government. That government only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems. Versus though the plurality of non-violent solutions that us here as a group already share. Yeah. So what are your thoughts? They should legalize weed. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <I'm in>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so what, what, what ended up what happening if you had no government? You have thousands of communities catering to your preferences and lifestyle. You can have your apartment complex that's 420 friendly. You can have one right across the street that's not. Right? You have this freedom of different preferences, right? But with government, through a, through a politician, you force the majority preference onto everyone in the geographic region. Whether they say no, whether they consent, whether they refuse or not agree with it, right? So that, that's what government does. It forces you to associate with those that don't want to associate with you to begin with, right? Yeah. If you hate cannabis so much, great, I will not I will not force that onto you. Right? Grant me the freedom to do what I will on my own property. Yeah. We can coexist. We can still go to the same mall, right? It's not like you go to a mall, you can identify who the 420 friendly users are or who's against your preferences or not. You're, you're here just for, for fun to buy a new teacher. You can we can coexist, but we can still have our little separate communities, right? But with government, it's one big force community that everyone has to get along and it's the, the majority opinion mob rule mentality onto the minority, right? So yeah, so we're part of uh, Liberty RVA, it's a non-political organization trying to let go of the politics that divides us uh, and turn to the values that everybody share against non-violence, right, for equality, for freedom. The things that do unite us as a community. Um, you would like, like some uh, pamphlets? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Well, actually, any questions? What are your thoughts on that? I totally agree. I agree. Yeah. 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 All right, cool. <laughs> Stuff your uh, AP professors won't tell you. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just curious, like, how did you already come to these conclusions? Did you have an experience, or you know, that led to it, or? I'm well, like with Obamacare and stuff, like my family's like healthcare got cut because they're like trying to force people to get healthcare who don't want it. And right, they said like, that wasn't gonna happen, right? Yeah. They just lied. Get, Obama you get, our, for, uh, get our healthcare, or we're gonna tax you, or yeah. we're gonna charge you, you know, for not having it. You know, like uh, no, don't don't put no force on you. Know. Yeah, exactly. What about you? Well, just like I don't know. I just feel like they have way too much control and like. What do you guys think about like giving up money and stuff like? Like giving, like giving up money completely, like not using money. As uh, a or uh, we can go Bitcoin. Well, all right. So what government is subjectively? They have monopolized the services I want. They have a monopoly on law, on judges, on courts, on police. USPS to have a monopoly in delivering pieces of paper, right? FedEx, CPS cannot compete. It's illegal. They can only deliver packages. Um, so they also have a monopoly in currency. So the value of the currency of the dollars lost 97% over since uh, it was enacted in 1913. So you have no freedom to exchange in any other currency if you want. It's illegal. Uh, there's a guy who tried to compete a couple years ago called the Liberty Dollar. IRS came in, seized his assets, threw him in a cage, right? So you can't even compete to try out different forms of currencies. Um, but Bitcoin it's an interesting digital currency. You guys heard of that? No, no Bitcoin. Um, so it's decentralized. Government can't control it. They can't regulate it. They don't like it because a lot of people are, have found ways to avoid having to pay taxes. Um, so that's uh, there's very low cost. You don't need a bank, right? So no transaction costs. Um, and a lot of a lot of people who are lower income like it because you don't need social security to, to start up. It's for, if it's free, anyone can start up. So there are alternative currencies that you can have uh, that kind of do exist now outside of the, the dollar. I, I just want to add to you that, you know, if you feel that currency, you know, or money is, is incompatible with the values, you know, you'll always be free to not participate. It doesn't matter the government's And, you know, if other people feel it's in their self-interest, then maybe it provides value for them. And, and maybe, if it does, maybe you'll look at it and say, you'll decide whether or not you still want that opinion. And so no one will force to, you know, use currency or not. And the best kind of way of interacting will merge uh, voluntarily through the spontaneous works. Yeah. Thanks for uh, stopping by, guys. We gave you uh, these pamphlets. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you. You guys have a happy first Friday.